almost time to get started, guys. I'm looking forward to today. Well, I just want to encourage you guys to get on board in following us on your favorite social media platforms and sign up for our 360 newsletter. We're going to kick off in May. This is part of perfectionism. We are, uh, we strove for March. We did not hit the March deadline, but we strove for uh, March and getting out our newsletter. So we're going to, we're going to hit it in May. That I can promise you. And while we grapple with perfectionism, uh, a significant obstacle to our success is you know, being too focused on perfecting everything and that can lead us to procrastination. So I'd rather start, maybe not hit that milestone and then retry again. Um, we don't want to feel like uh, failures at every step of the way. We just want to learn from our mistakes and keep moving, right? So let's get started, guys. I'm so excited to host this webinar. Be sure to follow us. Um, not only on your favorite social media platforms, but subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, or Rumble. And then also go to issue.com backslash 360 entrepreneur to get some of the tools that we can help you with um, in terms of having a better personal life and business life as a 360 entrepreneur. And what is a 360 entrepreneur? Well, this is when you take a 360 degree view of your life. That means we're rotating in and out of areas of our life from spouse to parent, to entrepreneur, to community leader, and we're trying to balance it all. Um, and it can either make you feel like you are an imposter or feel like this need to strive for perfection or you can really take the 360 mindset and say, I'm going to weave in to my marriage, make sure that it's healthy. I'm going to weave out and weave in to my relationship with my children, do the best that I can there, weave out. I am going to move into my business and see, are we on track and where we're headed? Move out. I'm going to look in to what I'm doing for my community. And as a volunteer, make sure that I've got activities there that's helping my local community, I'm going to move out. So you're evolving every aspect of your life. And don't forget, you've got to include yourself. And let me just tell you, as an entrepreneur for over a decade, the one thing remains constant. Whether I've talked to entrepreneurs that are startups, whether I have talked to very tenured entrepreneurs, I can tell you, you're not alone in your feelings when it comes to feeling a little inadequate, but the same lightness, that same thing that you guys feel in common, whether startup or tenure remains the same, the same truth. Your business is only as successful as your home life and your home life starts with your heart and your mind and your body. It starts right up in here. And if you've got distractions of internal conflict, that keeps you from being really present in your business. External conflict is always happening and you cannot concentrate on your business. Let me just tell you, your business will never be as successful as what's happening inside. And I think it's really important that we understand that everyone is imperfect. The only people that are not imperfect are those sweet little babies on the screen. That's perfection. But everyone makes mistakes. And often I ask my mentees when they're perfectionists, tell me the people that you know well. Tell me the people that you, ex that you aspire to be or that you look up to. And you tell me that they've never made any mistakes or failures in their life. So if successful people are constantly making mistakes, then tell me why you feel the need to be perfect yourself. Why do you have to be uniquely perfect? Doesn't make any sense. 
And I just know this well because I was secretly proud of my own perfectionism, as are many entrepreneurs. And we harbor this sense of pride because we're demanding, we're even unrealistic, we've got these high standards of how we should be. And we say we don't want to be mediocre, we don't want to be like everybody else. But let me just say this if you are striving for for perfection and through that process of striving for, for perfection, you are constantly holding yourself to levels of perfection that are unachievable. You're holding your spouse, you're holding your children, you're holding your employees to this level of accountability that's not achievable, then how can you be proud and how can you be happy when you are miserable and everyone around you is miserable as well? I know this well. I know this so well. My childhood broke me. Then in my 20s and 30s, I continued my own destruction through self-sabotaging. Then by my mid-30s and 40s, I was allowing others to really sabotage me in every aspect of my life. And so decades of abuse that either I did to myself or I allowed to have happened to me, it left me really as a shell of a person. And the good news is I'm very hard-headed. I'm one determined soul. And through the guidance of experts, I recognized this pattern in my behavior and I got the help that I needed. And I can tell you that I'm in my mid fifties now I'm happily married. I I have an adorable husband there up on the screen that I brought out of retirement to work in one of my businesses. And he pretty much runs the whole thing on his own. I'm a mother of five adult children, two step children. Um, I'm a mother-in-law. I'm a grandmother that likes to be called Yaya. I'm a mentor. I'm a volunteer. My hats are many. I am a 360 entrepreneur and I've got three businesses now and staff in North America and the Philippines and India and all of those people I absolutely adore. But life is not perfect and it never will be. But my peace of mind and my ability to silence my inner critic, control those outer critics, put boundaries out that they are not allowed to cross. They're not allowed to come in my world unless they can give me grace and I can give them grace as well. Those are tools that are so critical to my ability to have that in check so that I can focus on my business. And I want that for you as well. So we're going to do something a little bit different. We are going to exit out of this PowerPoint And um, I do want to encourage you to go to our website, sign up for a newsletter, you know, subscribe to YouTube, but stay tuned for workshops and retreats that we're going to be having. And I want you to see that um, we've got a lot of great resources that are going to be available for you to become a better, well-rounded 360 entrepreneurs. I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to be here on my screen Let me just get my notes up because we're just going to have a great one-on-one conversation this morning. Okay. All right. I've got my notes up. Let's talk about perfectionism. Boy, do I know this well. Oh my goodness. Okay. So we all know that it's this habit of striving for excellence. We're refusing anything but these perfect results. And it's also characterized as being unrealistic, this need for accuracy, having these really high standards to be overcritical of ourselves and others. Perfectionism puts immense pressure on ourselves and as a byproduct on those around us. And as a result, we become frustrated when we don't meet our own expectation and we really do take it out on others as well. And that flip side is that, yes, we are predisposed to accomplish great things and we've achieved incredible feats, but at what cost? So let's see if you can relate to any of these areas of perfectionism. Um, Maybe your goals are unrealistic. Let's say you're a startup. Let's say you're at 250 in revenue. You want to be in a million by the end of this year. Is this rational? 
Do you have the talent? Do you have the equipment? Do you have the products? Do you have the resources? Do you have the right marketing strategy? Do you have the cash flow? Do you even have the time? If you are the accounting person, the operations person, the salesperson, the marketing person, is that realistic? Do you know only 4% of small businesses hit 1 million in revenue? So is it rational? Is it? It's all of the things that we have to be thinking about. Do we have very realistic goals? Do you have realistic goals about growing your business if you um, have a family member that's sick or you're getting ready to have a baby? Or is this rational? And are you going to beat yourself up if you don't get there? What about striving to make things better even after they're considered perfect? Maybe you accomplished a goal, but you're looking at every little thing that you could have done better. Do you spend too much time perfecting the small details instead of looking at the bigger picture? Are you critiquing everybody else's work to the point that you're distracted from focused on highest payoff activities? Do you tend to procrastinate? Are you afraid of making mistakes? So you want everything in detailed order so you don't make any mistakes, but then you don't move forward. What about not being able to let go of mistakes? Or do you allow those mistakes to really define your own self-esteem? Are you haunted by your mistakes? Do you not look at them as a learning opportunity? What about the criticism of others? Do you have a hard time listening to their constructive feedback, regardless of their intent of heart? Let's say they have malintent. Do you still listen? Do you still consider? Maybe they're right. I know they weren't really out for my best interest, but are they right? Or what if they are right? And they have great intent and you're still shutting them down. Are you putting too much pressure on yourself to succeed because you're afraid of what others will think? You started this new business. Are you worried about what your spouse will think or your parents will think or your friends? Maybe your child is having a hard time in school. Maybe. They have issues and you're embarrassed. Are you really hard on yourself? Because you want to be successful as a parent. So you're beating yourself up all the time. Are you constantly reevaluating or overanalyzing decisions? Second guessing yourself and everything that you do. You've got the most critical eye towards yourself and your work. What about getting angry, frustrated when things don't work out the first time around? Your husband goes out to go to the grocery store. He comes back with the wrong brand of cereal or he doesn't come back with the the gallon of milk that you asked. But he went to the grocery store so that you could take care of your client or you could take care of the kids and he teamed up with you. But you can't see the bigger picture. What about? your perfectionism causing feelings of loneliness. You know why? Because when you're hard on yourself and you're hard on others, you isolate yourself. Nobody wants to be around someone where they don't feel like there's grace or feel like that every move they make, there's some sort of critique on why it wasn't good enough. Perfectionism is a vicious cycle. It's a reoccurring issue. And it's something that we have to make sure that we get control over because it really, even though it's an image of someone that wants these immaculate results, there really is the sense that you are driven by a un- fulfilled dissatisfaction of in everything in life. And when your vision isn't met of how you think things should be, you're just not a happy person. 
And that is being so focused on hitting that goal in a relationship or hitting that next step in a relationship or expecting your children to be a certain way or expecting your employees to meet a certain, you know, uh, milestone within the business. And when they don't, when, when people are not meeting what you believe to be the threshold for success, you're angry, you're disappointed, you're frustrated. You can't feel any kind of sense of satisfaction of how far you've come, not whatsoever. So it's, de- it's real detrimental to your own mental health. That anxiety and that need for perfection, it's going to drive more feelings of feeling inadequate or low self-esteem. And that stifles creativity. It stifles personal growth. It sti- stifles relationship growth with you, you and your family members. It's just suffocating. And perfectionists, we've got a skewed view of reality. I mean, it's a very distorted view because we live in a world where good enough is never enough. And we can be so focused on achieving our ideals that we stop considering the realities of life and of people. And the realities of life and people are that we are imperfect by nature. Perfectionism is a double-edged sword of sorts. You know, you could be striving for, for perfection um, to achieve a, a, a greater cause, right? You can. It, it can push you to be better. But if you have this limited ability to accept criticism or to look at how far you've come and compliment yourself for those little milestones away, then you really have an unwillingness to see beyond your own need for perfectionism. So that means that we've got to talk about what healthy perfectionism is and what neurotic perfectionism is, because there are two big differences. And that striving for perfection, yes, it can lead to accomplishments and and you can have these great high standards, right? We've talked about that, but you want to be able to keep pushing forward by also learning from those failures, accepting those failures and not killing yourself because of those failures, right? That's important. Neurotic perfectionism, on the other hand, you are more concerned with perfect appearances than actual results. You are about avoiding failure at all costs. That might mean that you take zero action because you don't want to deal with failure. It may mean that you throw people out of your life because it's got to be all good or they can't be in your life. There is no gray area for them to make any mistakes. Maybe you're trying to date and you're like, I have to have a guy that looks like this, does this kind of job, will do, will let me look at their bank accounts, will be strong, will be, you know, strong in masculinity, but also soft and emotional and willing to cry with me at a movie, right? You you just have unrealistic perceptions of reality, right? Or I want the perfect employee that can run my marketing, be my executive assistant, handle my accounting, and maybe do some graphic design work. It's unrealistic. You're looking for perfectionism that does not exist. And so we have to look at the types of perfectionism and the ability to be healthy, realistic versus conquering this neurotic perfectionism that will drive anyone crazy. So let's, let's start relationship with goals, having a relationship with goals, healthy perfectionism, you will feel positively motivated by your goals. There'll be a sense of excitement. You're going to be happy to accomplish them. You're going to get excited about getting started and you're going to be cool. 
I hit this milestone. Cool. I hit that checklist. Cool. I took that action item. Oh, shoot. I failed. That's okay. Got it. I know what I need to start doing, stop doing, keep doing. Neurotic perfectionism, that's when you're way down with your goals. Like, oh my God, if I don't hit this number, the sales number, the world has come to an end. Oh my God, if my husband or my wife does this one more thing, that's it. That's neurotic perfectionism. Okay, let's talk about a bias for action. Healthy perfectionism, you focus on taking action while improving as you go along. Neurotic perfectionism, you are constantly procrastinating because everything's got to be perfect before you get started versus just taking some sort of action. I have to have a perfect website before I can start my business. And without that website, I can't start selling. That's neurotic. There are plenty of businesses that are healthy and growing and have crappy websites or no websites. That's not realistic, right? You can take action. Personal satisfaction. Let's talk about what that looks like. Healthy perfectionism, you celebrate small victories along the way and you give yourself credit where credit is due. This is your win. This is your accomplishment and you take ownership of it. Neurotic perfectionism, you're constantly dissatisfied. Um, No matter what you've created or what you've achieved, there's always a feeling that it's not enough. Let's talk about macro and micro. Macro versus micro. Healthy perfectionism. You recognize the bigger picture. And you do what is necessary to really achieve the best outcome without getting caught up in the little details. So, honey, I'm taking care of the kids. I got a client call in a few minutes. Can you run to the grocery store for me? You bet, babe. I'm on my way. Text me what you need. He comes back. He doesn't have your brand of cereal. He doesn't have your milk. Can't you do anything right? Instead of, hey, He heard what I said. He got in the car. He's like, I'm going to take care of this, babe. Teamwork, we're in it together. So why can't you just say to him, don't worry, honey. When we go back to the grocery store, we'll get the the brand I like. Or, hey, honey, by the way, I just want to remind you, I really like this other brand if you don't mind getting that next time. Or, hey, honey, you forgot the milk. Do you think tomorrow when we're out and about, we can stop by and pick up a gallon of milk? It's rational, right? neurotic perfectionism in this area, you obsess about correcting the tiny mistakes that have no impact on the big picture. How about a thank you? How about thank you, honey, for going to the grocery store for me while I took care of that client call? Honey, thank you for going to the grocery store while I was doing the laundry. No, 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 no. We're just going to get ticked off that we didn't get the right brand of cereal and we didn't get the milk, right? Or let's put it in the context of business. Let's say that your employee was dealing with a customer service issue, customer not happy. And even after they did the best they could to take care of that customer, the customer is still not happy. Do you look at the intent of the heart and the approach that the employee took? Do you cultivate them and coach them on other ways to handle this type of customer issue? Or do you just get mad because the customer is still not satisfied? Or what if you see them juggling a lot of activities and maybe they're failing in one aspect, but they did another bunch of tasks that needed to be done very, very well. Are you focused on what they didn't do well? Are you looking at the bigger picture? All right, let's talk about work versus self. Healthy perfectionism, you make sure that you're going out on that date night with your wife or your husband, because that's important. You are going on vacation and putting the phone away and focusing in on the family, right? You are taking time to be alone and work on yourself, in whatever aspect that might be, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, or physically. Neurotic, the date night can get skipped for this month. You're too busy. Uh, One more email. 
before we go with the kids and go out and ski. Or I may not be able to meet you for the family vacation the day it starts. I'll come a few days later because I have some work to finish up. Neurotic perfection in this area puts yourself and your goals and your need for perfectionism that everything's buttoned up the way you think it should be buttoned up before you make any move to focus on yourself or your family. Let's talk about attitude towards failures. Healthy perfection, you know that failures are going to happen because this life is not perfect. And you focus on what you can learn from them and what you need to start doing, stop doing, and keep doing. Neurotic perfectionism you hate failure. And if anybody fails around you, you cut them out of your life or you fire them. You don't self-evaluate what you could have done better to improve the situation. Or if you made the mistake and not someone else, you're going to punish yourself endlessly. You will never forget or forgive yourself. Grace is not a word in your vocabulary. Okay, so let's talk about that's attitudes toward failure. What about attitudes towards past mistakes? Healthy, healthy perfectionism is use the past mistakes as positive learning points to be better. And neurotic is you feel regret over things that are long, long past. Those things that happened 20, 30 years ago you won't let them go. And guess what? You allow others to keep reminding you about how bad you were. Can't do that. I just want to call out C- Celeste Chua did this great breakdown and we'll, we'll try to get that up on issue.com of healthy versus neurotic. I just loved it and used that in this presentation, but I want to make sure she gets um, credit for it. And we'll get that up on issue.com here in the next week or so, so that you can see that chart of healthy versus neurotic. So let's talk about cognitive behavior and what you can do from a cognitive behavior standpoint to overcome that perfection. So listen, perfectionists need to understand that we need to recognize that ideals are more important than absolute. Ideally, we want to get here in our goals, in our life, and in our business, right? But if we get here, that's okay too, right? It doesn't have to be get to that milestone or you're a complete failure and everybody around you is a complete failure. No, no. Here is the milestone and we're going to work each step of the way to get there. And if we just get right here, that's okay too. But we know that we've done it with strategic planning, rational thinking, fair thinking, and fair standards that everybody can meet on our team or within our own, you know, goal setting with our spouse and as a family as well. That, hey, this is our end game here. But if we get here, we've still done quite great work. And so it's really important that when we're striving for that excellence and we're striving for those perfect results, that's healthy. That's okay. You got to know we're going to make mistakes along the way. And it's okay to be pushing in that way, but we got to be careful that we're not judging ourselves along the way. We're not criticizing ourselves along the way so that we can really get there with some joy and happiness. You don't want to have a goal here in life and in business that as you're getting there, you're miserable along the way. What the heck? That's not a way to live, right? So let's talk about some steps that you can use to kind of retrain your brain. And here's what you need to remember. Your subconscious thinks it's in control and you got to take your conscious thinking, your outright thinking, say subconscious, this is how we're going to behave. Your subconscious just wants to go with the flow. So the natural assumption is you're not good enough. You won't do enough. You should have done this, could have done that. Why didn't you, why didn't they, how come they, why didn't they do this? Why didn't they say this? Why didn't they think of this? All of that is kind of subconscious negative thinking. And as a conscious person, you have to listen to the voices in your head and say, "Uh uh-uh, we got to stop. We're not going to talk that way. We got to slow down. We got to think. And so 
first thing you got to do is say, I've got a perfectionist issue. I, I am very perfectionist driven. And when you recognize that a problem, you can see how it starts affecting every aspect of your business and your personal life. So that's very important. Then you got to identify the roots of why you are striving for perfectionism all the time. What are the underlying reasons why you've got such high standards and what triggers it? And I can tell you from personal experience for me, it was this need to be loved. I felt so empty inside. And I was so worried about what other people thought about me because I wanted their acceptance. So was it marrying the wrong person so that I could build this quasi semi-perfect family where my kids had the the dad and the mom and we were going to live in a house and everything was going to be fine. Okay. That obviously did not work because I was making decisions based on what everybody else would be thinking about us or once I got out of welfare, once I started growing my business, once we started making some great money, got to make sure that the kids go to camp, make sure the kids have a car, make sure the kids dress well, make sure they have this, make sure they have that. What was I doing? I was buying their love. I was wanting to buy their appreciation of me instead of just being mom. Or what about for my own self? where I was growing a business that I disdained, I hated. I wasn't being true to myself. And my, my marketing company in the very beginning was struggling because I wasn't focused on what I was good at, what I was passionate about, because it was a need to be perfect for everybody else, but not even take my own self into consideration. So all of that nonsense was really deeply rooted in this need for approval and for love and for acceptance. And guess what? None of it worked. Marriage didn't work. Kids didn't really know who I was enough to really love me as a mom because money was in between us. And then you had, and all my mistakes too, because I couldn't forgive myself. So God forbid they could forgive me. Right. And then my own personal dissatisfaction with my life because I wanted everything perfect for my husband, wanted him perfectly happy with his business while my stuff wasn't happening. No, none of that. It all fell apart because I had a need to drive perfection in order to receive love. What a sick way to think, right? But sometimes that's what we do. We don't know better, but when we know better, we do better, right? I'm definitely doing better. So you got to monitor your thoughts and your feelings. Whenever I feel that need to be the perfect, whatever, I have to pause and say, what am I trying to accomplish here? Is this healthy or is this crazy thinking? Is this healthy thinking that I'm striving for or is this neurotic thinking? So you got to slow down your thoughts, slow down your emotions and think about intent of heart. And then you got to identify really what's important to you. So if your business is struggling with sales and you know that's going to have ramifications on being able to provide for your family, that's when you talk to your spouse and say, honey, we're going to either have to hire somebody to take care of the lawn or honey, I need you to take care of some of these responsibilities because I've got to focus on the business or we're going to have some cash flow issues coming up, right? So there's a coordination of saying you're important to me, but this is the business is in survival mode and I'm, I'm worried, right? There's this genuine collaboration or it's the other way around. Maybe the business is doing well, but something's going on in your marriage or maybe one of your children are sacrificing something in school. They're not doing well. Maybe they're being bullied. Something's going on and you need to spend some more time with them. Maybe you go to your management team and say, hey, listen, I need you guys to watch some things in the business. I have to go take care of these priorities, right? you got to focus on what matters to you the most and prioritize those goals over perfect results. Meaning while the team is running the business, they may not run it the way you want it. There may be some things that they make mistakes on. 
But right now you got to take care of your marriage. You got to take care of that sick one, or you got to take care of that child. That's what's important. And you're willing to sacrifice perfect results in order to achieve what's most important to you and set realistic expectations for yourself. Set goals that are in common with your spouse, with your partner. If you want to grow your business to 20 million, don't think that your problems are going to decrease from being startup mode to 20 million. They're going to increase. You guys have to be on the same page as you're moving forward in life and in business. And you got to keep evaluating those goals. Some of the goals that my husband and I had when he first got into the business no longer exist. We had ideas on how we wanted to run the businesses and when and what we were going to do and where we were going to live and what. Those are all different. The goals that we had last year and the goals we have now, some of them are the same, some of them are gone, and some of them we've adjusted. And that's about setting realistic expectations based on all kinds of issues, age, what's going on with finances, what's going on within the relationship, et cetera. Another thing that you have to do when you want to really start adapting to changing this perfectionism from neurotic to healthy is you got to get rid of that all or nothing thinking. I, I cannot overemphasize this enough. All things are not bad and all things are not good. There is gray in between. And you got to recognize that mistakes are going to teach you valuable lessons. They're going to help you grow. And you got to strive towards balance than those absolutes that it only has to be this way or forget it. They only have to behave this way or they can't be in my life. They only have to meet that sales goal or I'm going to let them go. You've got to really make sure that you challenge that all or nothing thinking. Practice that self-compassion. Talk to yourself the same way you would talk to a friend. You saw on the entry PowerPoint slides, I had these beautiful babies because they are the image of perfection. And really, quite frankly, they're the only thing that's perfect in this life right now, right? Because as life goes on, it's imperfect. Things happen along the way and people are imperfect. And that's what we're working with. We're working with imperfection. And so we've got to manage that with compassion and with grace. And sometimes the best way to do that is to take time off from work and from projects and take a breather for yourself alone or take a breather and be with the family and then come back in and you'll have this new found realization, this new burst of energy when you come back into a project, back into the office, back into the business after you've taken a break, right? You got to let that mind rest a little bit. And find support from trusted individuals, find other entrepreneurial peers that you can share best practices with, join entrepreneurs organization or National Association of Women Business Owners or NFIB, find like-minded entrepreneurs that you can share things with. And if your issues are very, very deep-rooted, get some solid therapy because they will help you with great coping strategies to move from neurotic perfectionism to healthy perfectionism. And let me just tell you, if you had a very, very hard childhood, you need that therapist to go along the journey with you so that you can become a better individual. So you can have some peace in your mind and your heart and your soul. And then also within your own relationships and that plays out nicely in your business. Now, I just want to tell you something. You are the foundation to your home. Your home is your life. Okay. You are the foundation. And when we come out of a difficult childhood, that foundation may be cracked. That's okay. We're working on it. And it may shift the house a little bit. And the life that you're building may have some little cracks in the wall, maybe a little un unkiltered, right? That's okay. Keep working to elevate and flatten and fix that foundation. That is your mind, your spirit, your heart, working to internalize your own individual strength. Okay. That's so important.
But here's the thing, as you're building your life, right? The framework is your family, it's your spouse. The next thing that's important is your relationship with your partner or your spouse. When you guys are operating in a team together, doesn't mean there's not going to be friction, doesn't mean there's not going to be arguments, but when you have common goals together, you're lifting each other and holding each other up in order to succeed. And the beauty of that, the beauty of that is that when you fall down, when one of you falls down, the other one lifts each other up, right? And there's no judgment because you both had common goals going forward. And those goals need to be mapped out and written so you're on the same page and inclusive of the children. And if they're old enough, let them be a part of the family goal process as well. It's a beautiful thing. Wrap them into that and make sure that if your spouse doesn't know about your business goals, that you are including them in those business goals. Because remember what I said, you may be at a million wanting to grow to 20 million. Is your partner ready for that? Is the entire family prepared for what that means for you? So that, that need to communicate helps the structure of your house be strong and solid. Then you layer on the roof and the interior design, that's the fluff, right? That's the employees. That's the material possessions. All of that is the fluff that you're putting around the structure of the house, but the inside structure needs to be strong. Starts with you, starts with your spouse, it starts with your family, and then everything else fills in. And then you've got a strong home that's built to last. Okay. So, so important that you've got coping strategies to fix that foundation. And let me, let me just say something. If you had a broken foundation and you're working on fixing it and you've hurt some people along the way, because of your perfectionism, the best thing you can do is lead by example, continue to modify and change your life, pray for them and hope that they could heal from the pain that you've caused them. And they can come back into your life with a newfound perception. Don't expect them to ever understand what you went through and why your foundation is broken, but pray that they're able to heal in their own right and maybe come back into that relationship with you while you're strong and healed and they're strong and healed and you can move forward into some great new adventures in life. And I want to end this webinar and saying that one of the things that we have to do is while all of the things that I was listing, right? Practice self-compassion, get rid of um, the, the challenge, the all or nothing thinking, you know, acknowledge your own perfectionism. The greatest thing that we can do as perfectionist is we can delegate and let go. We can send the husband to the grocery store and let it go. If it doesn't come back the way you want it, it's going to be fine. Look at the bigger picture. Give your employees the work that they need. Train them well. Make sure that you're giving them a proper job description. You're giving them performance reviews. You are telling them how to do the work. You're doing the work together. And then you're letting them do the work and know that they will never run their business as great as you would, right? That's just not reality, but you're going to train them up for success and you're going to delegate and let go. And that letting go is a very difficult task. And as perfectionists, sometimes we have to do it in small steps, but once you get comfortable with delegating in small steps, it becomes easier and easier. You are able to trust your family members more. You're able to trust your employees more. And even if they've got different opinions, you're able to accept those opinions with grace. And even if they critique you, you'll know that the intent of the heart is in the right place. And you're able to take and evaluate it for yourself to become a better person. And you're going to see your stress levels reduce. You're going to see the anger reduced. You're not going to be so grumpy all the time because you're not living in this need to control every little thing. 
which by the way, you're not really in control. When you're trying to control everything, you're not in control. You gotta let it go. You gotta realize that. So last but not least, celebrate every bit of progress, victory and failure. We are hard on ourselves as entrepreneurs. And we rarely celebrate our smallest victories, but it's important for perfectionists. We, We have to acknowledge our successes. No matter how small they may seem, we've got to acknowledge them. And there's times when throughout the year, if I'm feeling like, God, I just want to get to this one milestone. What, I wanted to get our newsletter out for 360 out in March. Couldn't do it. Had to get it out in May. But why couldn't we do it? Because we had some clients for our digital agency that we had to address. I got an opportunity to do a little bit of traveling. So we didn't get it done. Is it life-threatening? No, it's not. It'll get out in May. That's it. It's okay. But you know what I am going to celebrate? I'm going to celebrate the win that I'm even here doing this now that I can uh, get a newsletter out because I have a great exceptional team. I'm going to look at the bigger picture. It's a small victory. We'll get it out in May. It will happen. That's progress. And those victories build motivation. They build resilience. They boost self-confidence. Perfectionists need to take that time to really acknowledge our hard work. And we are hard workers but we can't get neurotic in the process. So I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to wrap this up. I want you to know that you even listening to this and working on yourself is one step in such a positive direction. You are a 360 entrepreneur. You are managing every aspect of your life. And there may be areas that need a little bit more attention than others. You will get to it. You will get there. Give yourself some grace and then give others grace around you as well. It's so important, especially these days. We all need a little bit of grace. Well, I just want to thank you so much for your time. I want to thank you for being here. I love these second Saturdays of every month where we can just take a moment, work on ourselves, concentrate on ourselves because we really do deserve it. Remember, all your business is only as good as you are inside. Okay, guys, take care. Have a great weekend. I hope that you will celebrate the holiday season well.